Hello everybody and welcome to another hybrid picking lesson. First I want to apologise for the amount of time I left between episode 1 and episode 2. I've just been immensely busy as usual, but I have been itching to do this and I've had a lot of requests for it. So yeah, here we are, we are back. And as with last time, we have the Axe Cam mount, this uh, camera mount on my guitar, so you can get these lovely close-up shots of my picking hand. So just to review, if you did miss the last episode, I would encourage you to go back and watch that lesson. But in essence, what we talked about in there was the subject of hybrid picking and the pre-placement of fingers when uh, pinching strings. I always describe it as pinching strings. So if I'm taking an open E chord, I can pinch those uh, three groupings of strings. It doesn't matter where I play. a pinching motion that comes from the fingers, not from the wrist, uh, but more importantly those fingers tend to be placed on the strings before plucking. Anyway, like I say, you can watch that lesson in detail. Today we are going to be moving on to the subject of plucking individual notes and also the we're going to introduce the concept of banjo rolls. So yeah, everything in the last lesson was very much dealing with playing hybrid picking ideas, but using it as a method of uh, playing chord stabs, right? Well, today we want to move away from that. We want to move into the land of single note soloing. So before dealing with the rolling technique, I just want to introduce the technique of playing with the pick and the fingers. So uh, what I want you to do is we're thinking very much around an A chord here, like open A, or uh, an A bar chord at the fifth fret. Now, anytime I play that, I tend to see this pattern of sixths on the top strings. So nine and nine on the G and high E. 7 and 7 on the G and high E, and 6 and 5 on the high E and uh, G, or G and high E. That sounds like an A chord, right? Sounds pleasing. So what we want to practice doing is we're pre-placing the pick on the G string at the ninth fret, and our index finger, sorry, uh, middle finger, is already placed on that high E string, ready to pluck. And again, when you look at that up close, that's the finger doing the plucking, not me using my wrist like this to get that plucking motion. So I just want to alternate between those sixths, uh, nine and nine, seven and seven, and six and five. Now I'm putting a little bit of a palm mute on the G string. You could even put a chromatic passing uh, chord in there. A snap on that. And that's actually why we like that hybrid picking sound. If you compare that to me plucking the string. We can get a lot more snap with our finger plucking that string. So that would be playing um, individual notes. And of course you could practice any lick where you have uh, notes on adjacent strings like that. If I was playing a blues in A. So that's me sliding from 7 to 9 on the G. And then using my index finger on the 8th fret of the B. I'm going to alternate between the pick and fingers, pick middle, pick middle. So that alternating motion, very, very common, uh, and they work great for rock, repeating uh, rock licks. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on that particular idea here. If you want to delve further into the ins and outs of playing licks using that as a concept, I would recommend you check out one of my uh, books, perhaps uh, Country Guitar Soloing Techniques. There's lots of this stuff in there because we fo obviously focus on technique in there. What I really want to look at today is the concept of roles. So it would be worth, with each of those single note ideas, trying to play them one of two ways. One with the index, sorry, <laughs> I get the fingers wrong, the middle finger, 
but then also doing the same thing using the ring finger to pluck those strings. And the reason we're doing that is because for the rolls, we're actually going to use all three fingers. Now, if we roll this back, no pun intended, to the basic A triad, C sharp, E, and A on the top three strings, that's me plucking the pick and the two fingers at the same time. Now this is something you should have practiced at this point. That plucking motion, right? What we could practice doing is what's called the forward roll. So we can use the pick, and as I, as I keep mentioning, pre-placement of the fingers. I pluck with the pick, but you notice that my middle and ring fingers are already there. They're already resting on those strings. So we can pluck the G string, then the B, and then the high E. And as soon as that pick goes down, these fingers are resting there on the strings, ready to pluck. Now the way I'm playing it there is with two eighth notes and a quarter note, or two sixteenths and then an eighth, depending on how you choose to count that. Uh, but it's really like a four note, one and two and three and four and one and two and... That works, but really we want to practice this as a triplet, so there's no uh, gap. So triplet, triplet... <laughs> Now you're going to want to spend a bunch of time practicing that until it becomes quite automatic. Now, as I said in the first video, I don't have any nails on my hands, so when I'm doing this, I'm doing it with the flesh. Um, you do need to build up calluses on there, those fingers. Mine aren't as good as they used to be, apparently. If you were doing this with nails, though, what you're aiming for when you do that is a nice pick-like attack with each of those fingers can sort of use the sides of my nails and simulate that versus the flesh. Now once you've got that forward motion down, I would actually encourage you to just take any collection of three note triad grouping. So if you took that A position, sorry, uh, E shape area, E bar chord, A major chord, E bar shape, and we took the triads contained within that, you could actually just roll through those. Triple like that as a way to just practice this rolling motion when I'm warming up on the guitar. Uh, it could be just a bar chord, you could just hold the bar chord and go. We're aiming for evenness in the notes. Triple up, triple up, triple up. Little bit of unevenness in there, but yeah. It's been a while since I've really, really practiced that. <laughs> That's the motion we're looking for. Now, what I wanna do is apply that to a typical banjo roll. Uh, now, the first one I like to practice this with, uh, introduce this with, is um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play uh, three on the G string, and we're gonna to slide to four. We're then going to pluck the high E string. Now you can either use the, the middle finger or the ring finger for this. I'm probably gonna use the, uh, the middle finger, but I'll try both ways. So three slide into four, pluck the high E string. That's two notes, one, two. Now in a bar that has eight notes, we've got six more notes to play, right? So here we're gonna use two of those forward rolls. So we'll have one, two, one, two, three, one, two, now to be clear, that's me playing four on the G, open B and open E, so. I'll try a hammer on. I'll do that roll next, but. It was a little bit awkward. That's a nice thing for us to practice. So we can take that incredibly slowly. And 
build up the speed. Now that works as a roll, it's the first one that I like to introduce. Another one that I found that is great, this is a Danny Gatton lick. Um, same basic notes, we hammer from three to four. We do that twice. Pluck the high E string. Now that's five notes, one, two, three, four, five. We've got three more to go, so then we can do our roll uh, from G to high E. I absolutely love this as a concept, and Danny Gatton was one of the masters of doing stuff like this to a level that I can't even dream of achieving. In fact, I'm going to cut in a clip here. This is Danny Gatton doing some uh, banjo imitation stuff on guitar, and he's tuned to open G. Absolutely phenomenal playing. Check it out. So of course that's going to be our long-term goal. We want to we want to get there, but I've been working to get there for a very long time and still not anywhere close. So who knows how long that might take you? Uh, but with devotion, I don't see why you won't be able to achieve it. So the cool thing with that lick. <laughs> is we can actually move it down to like an open E position. So you could also do hammer from one to two. And then open G to first fret G. That's a nice little rolling mechanic. Another way I might do that would be so at the end there I'm actually just hammering from the open G to the first fret G, rolling across and ending on the second fret uh, of the D string in the open E. nice little rolling mechanic that can be practiced. Now what I feel uh, is worth doing before we move on to more complicated concepts in future videos would be to just look at different places we can apply that forward roll motion. So another place that's great for that would be to use the fifth fret of the D string, the open G string and the third fret of the B string and it gives you these notes. <laughs> Same rolling motion, pick, finger, roll, roll. Pick, finger, roll, roll. Now, the fun thing about this is this kind of gives you like a G sound. You can then move the note G on the fifth fret of the D down to F sharp. And if you move this entire grouping down, to the first and second frets, you kind of get like a C chord. That's a nice thing to practice. simple rolling mechanic and yeah really the sky is the limit for stuff like this if you want to take this to an advanced level I do think it's kind of cool when you when you take those triad voicings
there we have it. I think that's probably enough examples for you to get working on. Uh, really, as I say, sky's the limit with this stuff. Practice that forward roll motion because in the long run, we need to practice the reverse roll motion. Then you get some more complicated rolling techniques or banjo rolls where you're combining forward and reverse rolls. Uh, and if you think of like that, that classic Jerry Reed. Oh, sorry. time since I played that. Usually I prefer to do that finger style like Jerry would, but uh, yeah, you can do that with a pick. There's reverse rolls in there. Apparently, apparently I need to go and do some practice too. So um, there we have it, uh, hybrid picking lesson number two. Now any questions about that, please do let me know. Hit me up in that comment section below. I'm always happy to read your feedback and always happy to help you out if I can. Lastly, I just wanna say a huge thank you to these guys over here, some of my supporters over on patreon.com. They keep videos like this coming to you. And in fact, it's just occurred to me that I need to update that list because we had a new patron join my $10 credits roll. A uh, gentleman by the name of Cliff, if memory serves me right. Um, I will fix that. I will fix that immediately after this video. So um, yeah, if you want to check me out on Patreon, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. You can join us for as little as one dollar over there. Great way to support the channel. Of course, you know you can also head on over to Amazon, check out one of my books. I'm proud of all of those. In particular, for this lesson, that country guitar soloing techniques in the bottom and the middle. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. So yeah. Do check one of those out. Uh, as always, thank you so much for all the support, guys. It really does mean a lot. You can check me out on Patreon by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this little button down here, and you'll see two more of my videos here and here. One of them will probably be, you know, hybrid picking lesson number one, because that would make sense, right? Uh, yeah, so much love, guys, and I will see you in that comment section. And if not, I will see you for another video soon. Laters.